The Bible is the most historically accurate book ever penned. Hundreds of ancient discoveries verify its accuracy, and here is a list of nine of those. Number one, the pilot inscription. In 1961, in an Italian-sponsored dig in Caesarea, archaeologists uncovered a stone that had a Latin inscription on it that said Pontius Pilatus, prefect of Judea. That pilot is mentioned in the gospel accounts on several occasions. You read in John 19, 29, Pilate then went out to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? The find verifying the New Testament statement that Pilate was the prefect of Judea. Discovery number two, Hezekiah's tunnel. In 2 Chronicles 32, 30, we read a statement that says, This same Hezekiah also stopped the water outlet of Upper Gihon and brought the water by tunnel to the west side of the city of David. You would think that if a king had dug a tunnel under Jerusalem, we would be able to find it, and that's exactly what we find. A huge tunnel that matches perfectly the biblical description of Hezekiah's tunnel. Discovery number three the Taylor Prism. In 1830, a man by the name of Robert Taylor uncovered a 15-inch tall clay cylinder. There are 500 lines of written text on this clay cylinder, and it was written, it was put there by a man named Sennacherib. Well, Sennacherib was a king of Assyria that you read about in the Bible. On the clay cylinder, here's what Sennacherib said. As to Hezekiah the Jew, he didn't submit to my yoke. I laid siege to 46 of his strong cities, walled forts, and to the countless small villages in their vicinity, and conquered them by means of well-stamped earth ramps and battering rams. It's interesting when you compare Sennacherib's statement of what he did with the biblical statement of what he did. In 2 Chronicles 32.1, we read, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came and entered Judah, he encamped against the fortified cities, exactly like Sennacherib says he did. Discovery number four, the David inscription. For many years, people said that David was a figment of the Israelite imagination because no archaeological finds had been discovered that verified his existence. And yet, in 1993, in Tell Dan, there was a man who was working named Abraham Byron who discovered a stone, and on that stone was the inscription of an Israelite king from the house of David. The Bible uses that very designation in 1 Kings 12, verse 19. The David inscription validated the biblical text. Number five, the Moabite stone. Found in 1868, it's a black basalt stone that measures about three and a half feet high, two feet wide. On that stone, Mesha, the king of Moab, cut lines of text in about 850 B.C. Mesha mentions that Omri was the king of Israel who had oppressed Moab, but then Mesha says he saw his desire upon Omri's son and upon his house, the Mesha Stone cites Omri as the king of Israel, just as 1 Kings 16, 21 through 28 indicates. Furthermore, it mentions Omri's son, Ahab, in close connection with the Moabites, just as 2 Kings 3, 4 through 6 does. In addition, both the steel and 2 Kings 3, 4 through 6 list Mesha as the king of Moab, and it further names the Israelite tribe of Gad and the Israelite god Yahweh, another validation of the biblical accuracy. Number six, the Nazareth house. In 2008, a skeptic named Rene Psalm wrote a book that he claimed destroyed Christianity once and for all. He said that Jesus could not have existed because there was no town of Nazareth in the first century. In 2009, an archaeological discovery was announced that they had found a small house in Nazareth that dated to the first century. The house was only about 900 feet square total, but it was large enough to provide evidence of the Bible's accuracy. Number seven, the Cyrus 
cylinder. In 1879, Hormoz Rassam found a small clay cylinder. It's about nine inches long, and it's now in the British Museum of Natural History. In the ancient city of Babylon, he uncovered this, and this clay cylinder was commissioned by King Cyrus. And it had an inscription on it about his victory over the city of Babylon and his policy toward the nations he had captured. And the text said, I returned to these sacred cities on the other side of the Tigris, the sanctuaries of which have been in ruins for a long time, the images which used to live therein and established for them permanent sanctuaries. The policy, often hailed as Cyrus's declaration of human rights, coincides perfectly with the biblical account of the ruler's actions, in which Cyrus decreed that the temple in Jerusalem would be rebuilt and that all the exiled Israelites who wished to join in the venture had his permission and blessings to do so. You'd read that in Ezra chapter 1, verses 1 through 11. This little nine-inch long clay cylinder stands as impressive testimony that validates the biblical accuracy. Number eight, the discovery of the Pool of Siloam. In 2004, a majestic stepped entrance to the Pool of Siloam was uncovered in the area known as the City of David. In John chapter 9, verse 7, we read that Jesus said to a blind man, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is translated sent. So he went and washed and came back seeing. Validation once again of the biblical accuracy. Number nine, the Hittite tablets. For many years, people made fun of the biblical text and said it mentioned people and places that never did exist. One of those groups was the nation of the Hittites. But in 1906, Hugo Winkler was doing some excavation in the Turkish city of Baghaz Khoi. There he uncovered 10,000 clay tablets that documented the history of the Hittite nation, and they discovered that that area was the capital of the Hittite nation. In Joshua chapter 11, we read about the Canaanites in the east and the west and the Amorite and the Hittite. In 1906, Hugo Winkler discovered the Hittite nation that the Bible had mentioned some 3,000 years before. The Bible is the most historically accurate book ever penned. 